Okay, um, thank you, Greg, first of all, and good morning, everyone. Uh, it's great to see everyone here, and I'd like to say thank you for everyone joining us, whether here or on the webcast. And also, I'd like to say thank you for all of your support over this past year of Intuit. We really do appreciate it. Um, I also really appreciate your attention. We've given you a lot of material, a lot of facts per second this morning, um, but we're almost to the Q&A section. I'm gonna share how our strategy translates into our financial results, and most importantly, the financial principles that guide our thinking. So let me start with a look back. Um, as Brad said, this is like you know, the last time we get to talk about FY18. So on the left side of the slide, you will see um, last year's points for, that we shared at Investor Day. And on the right side, you'll see how we did. So our performance in 2018 was strong across each of our businesses. QuickBooks Online subscribers grew 43% and small business online ecosystem revenue grew 10 points faster than our 30% target. And we're equally pleased with the strong results that we had in our consumer business, which we started off with 7 to 9% revenue guidance and we ended up with 14% growth. Now as a company, we always shoot for double digit revenue growth and we grew 15% last year which was up five points from 2017. Non-GAAP operating income grew 14%, which was up two years, excuse me, which was up 2% versus the prior year. And this led to non-GAAP earnings per share growth of 27%. So overall, it was a really good year. And I couldn't be more proud of the team that delivered these results. Um, you've all seen this before. One thing that doesn't change year after year is our True North framework. It guides us in everything that we do. Now, this is more than just words on a page or a fancy chart on the wall. It's actually the fundamental way that we manage our business each and every day, driving the decisions that we make. Now, Brad already touched on many elements of this framework, so I'm gonna highlight one in particular. We have four stakeholders that we're solving for. And we make decisions with these four groups in mind, our employees, our customers, our partners, and our shareholders. Now, we believe that talented, engaged employees doing the best work of their lives to solve customer problems hand in hand with our partners is the best way to deliver outcomes for shareholders. Now, decisions must balance the short and the long, which means delivering against our commitments to the board and to you, our shareholders, in the current period, while ensuring we're set up for strong and durable performance for many years to come. And we've shared with you that we gauge our results, not against a static target, but rather against the best competitor or alternative. And this ensures we're delivering for each of our stakeholders. We call this delivering best we can be results. Now for employees, this means enabling the world's top talent to do the best work of their lives. And for our customers, we remain focused on delivering unparalleled benefits. And for partners, we work together to add value for our customers but we also strive to make sure that their experience working with us is a delightful one. And of course you, our investors, our focus is on growing our customer base and increasing the velocity of connections within our One Intuit ecosystem to drive long-term growth. And we invest our capital in the highest yield opportunities, so we increase shareholder value and provide an attractive return that's, um, that's uh, attractive relative to our peers. And we use our financial principles to guide these decisions. These principles are largely unchanged from a year ago, but you should know that we do challenge these and discuss them each and every year as we go into our three and one year planning process. We then reaffirm as a management team and then with the board. 
Now, I'm going to dive into each of these a little bit deeper. So first, organic double-digit revenue growth. So given the market opportunity we have and our focus on delivering customer benefits, we think this is an objective that we should strive for each and every year. Then we focus on growing operating income dollars faster than revenue. We think it's a good discipline for us to approach each year with an expectation that expenses will grow slower than revenue does. And as we've said, we manage margins at the company level, so I wouldn't focus too much on the small changes in operating margin of a business unit, given the leverage we get from cross-company platform investments. And we apply rigorous principles to our internal investments as well. For example, measuring lifetime value to customer acquisition cost as we enter a new market for QBO. Now next, we deploy cash to the highest yield opportunities, targeting a 15% return on investment over five years. And this principle is key to managing our business for both the short term and the long term. We strive to make the best investments throughout the year, and we actively change resource allocations based on developments that we see out in the market. Now, this threshold is key to making all of our internal investments that'll deliver for years to come. And we also apply the same hurdle to any acquisitions that we may be looking at. After this, we return excess cash to shareholders. This speaks to our stewardship of how we handle the capital we generate and comes in the form of buybacks and dividends. On share repurchases, we utilize a smart grid to achieve a rate of return over time that exceeds our own cost of capital. And finally, we manage a conservative investment grade balance sheet that can sustain our business through all types of economic cycles. And this has served us well in the past and actually lets us lean in during a downturn. Okay, I mentioned the market opportunity as a critical input to how we're thinking about growth <clears throat> and more specifically, our ability to grow revenue double digits. It all starts with healthy customer growth. And here on the left side of this slide, you'll see our latest summary of the customer opportunity in small business. As Sasan highlighted earlier, in addition to the TAM figures that you've seen before, you'll now see SAM, which is the serviceable addressable market. And this is designed to give you a better sense of how we view the more immediate available market in each country based on our go-to-market plans. And we still have a huge opportunity ahead of us in the US, and there are additional opportunities all over the world for our product and broader ecosystem. Across the business, we continue to focus on achieving product market fit in new markets and delivering awesome first-time use, while also driving improved ecosystem experiences that we can monetize. And you've already seen the initial results um, with some of the recent acceleration of our online services. And we continue to focus on monetizing our customer base while also adding new customers. Now, looking on the right side of the slide, you'll see total paying customers. This includes QuickBooks Online, our desktop subscribers, and desktop unit sales. The key point I want to highlight here is that our total net ads continues to grow. And we saw total paying customers increase 26% in fiscal 2018. Our desktop base remains relatively sticky, and we're seeing new customers who are choosing QBO. And while some of our desktop customers are migrating to the cloud, we're adding even more new customers to the franchise. And as Greg said earlier, um, we're equally excited about the opportunity to grow customers and revenue in the consumer business. We continue to see nice tailwinds in the DIY category, and we expect to grow customers and extend our lead through innovation. Now, tax reform presents us with real opportunities that we believe will be a net positive to our business. We expect that simplification will accelerate DIY category growth. And as Greg mentioned, um, TurboTax is a trusted brand, 
And we expect consumers will choose the brands they trust most during a period of change. And if tax reform increases demand for help and assistance, we can deliver that with our TurboTax Live offering. Now, TurboTax Live also provides us the opportunity to transform the category, opening up the $20 billion assisted tax prep market. Greg mentioned that scaling of this product may mean that revenue will continue to grow faster than customers. And we saw this last year with unit growth of 4% and revenue growth of 14%. And this will likely drive our revenue growth faster than units over the next several years. So as we increase the value to, we provide to customers, um, we are also able to improve monetization. And while ARPC is an outcome of customer and revenue growth for us, we understand that it's a key input for your models, and so we provide this um, high-level look at it um, every year. So looking at QBO worldwide, we saw an increase in our ARPC this year driven by our U.S. business, and that was partially offset by our non-U.S. business. Going forward, we expect QBO worldwide ARPC to increase, and we see this being driven by our maturing base in the U.S., and increased monetization from attached services and pricing for value as we add more features that deliver our customer benefits. Now, outside of the US, we expect to see an increase in ARPC from some lower promotional activity. And in the desktop business, we continue to see our ARPC increase due to strong growth in our enterprise solutions, which we expect to continue. ARPC for these offerings tends to average more than about 5x what we would see for desktop. And in addition, retention of our most complex and valuable customers on the desktop platform remains strong. So moving to consumer, we saw another year of strong ARPC increases due to attach and mix shift following the introduction of TurboTax Live, as well as some pricing for value as we deliver more benefits to the customers. So growing customers and improving monetization leads to strong revenue growth, and we expect the online TurboTax and QuickBooks businesses to be the primary drivers going forward. Over the next three years, we expect more than two-thirds of our revenue to come from QBO and TurboTax Online, with QBO delivering much of that growth. Our desktop offerings continue to be profitable, and that allows us to invest in new products and new markets around the world. So after a decade of economic expansion, a number of you have asked us how will Intuit perform during a recession. And the short answer is that we're pretty resilient. Our solutions are more important than ever in tough times and we help our customers survive in these environments. You know, people often start businesses when companies have layoffs, and that presents a real opportunity in QuickBooks. And keep in mind that in 2009, it really hit small businesses even harder than other recessions because it was pretty much impossible to get a loan. However, our revenue still grew during that period compared to declines for many other customers, excuse me, many other companies. And of course, consumers still have to file taxes even during a recession. So most importantly, we have a track record of helping our customers prosper in difficult times. In fact, it's often an opportunity for us to really lean in and build loyalty with our base um, so that everyone emerges um, on the other side stronger and more successful. For example, um, during the last downturn, we dropped our prices on QuickBooks um, to really show our commitment to helping our customers through the tough times. So with products that customers need in all economic environments and a significant portion of current period revenue coming from existing customers, we've got a highly predictable revenue model. We expect about 75% of revenue this year to come from customers who are already on board or who are expected to return based on past behavior. 
So are a highly predictable revenue model and a disciplined and long-term investment philosophy enables us to continue producing a strong financial profile. So walking down the P&L, gross margin has been stable about 84%, and we expect that to continue. Many of you have asked about the impact to our gross margin from moving to the cloud. And we do expect some savings, but we actually made the move to accelerate our innovation cycle. And in addition, our business is growing. So we're investing in digital cogs and reserved instances in place of capital expenditures. Um, as for sales and marketing, it continues to be an area we're investing in, which we believe is important to build our brand and drive our business, especially as we enter new geographies. Our LTV to CAC targets provide the guardrails for our investments um, in small business. And our consumer team actually tends to focus more on a one-year payback. As for R&D, um, we benchmark our spending across um, our tech peers to make sure that we've got the right amount of investment in invention and in innovation, excuse me. Um, you heard Talo talk earlier about the investments we've made in productivity tools and services, and that investment is helping us to drive our strategy forward with speed. And we continue to see an opportunity in GNA. We um, really want to continue to look at generating some leverage there, and we're working hard to make sure that we're best in class. So we manage the business with a focus on freeing up money that can be reinvested in the places that matter most. This is key for us for making sure we can continually reinvent ourselves and deliver the best products and experiences for our customers. So what do these investment opportunities look like? Last year, we spoke about our investments in four key areas to help accelerate progress in the business, and this approach was successful in driving a strong year while simultaneously establishing the right building blocks for durable growth. Um, we freed up nearly $200 million that we reinvested into priority areas. And allocating dollars to the best investment opportunities is really a part of who we are. It's part of our DNA. And going forward, we'll target high yield opportunities that drive durable growth and accelerate our speed, all within the context of our financial principles. So looking to fiscal 2019, examples on the slide include investments in first time use, AIML, migration to the cloud, um, TurboTax Live, and expanding our QBO customer base with products like QBO Advanced. These types of investments build the path for us to achieve the sustained double-digit revenue growth we're targeting. So it's important for us to continue to be effective stewards of capital as we've been in the past. And looking back over the last four years, we've returned $6 billion of free cash flow to shareholders through share repurchase and dividends. We bought back fewer shares this last year than we typically have, in part due to an uptick in M&A. However, share repurchases are still an important tool to return capital that can't be invested profitably in the business. And I'll talk more about that in just a second. But as for dividends, our board declared a 21% increase in our dividend for fiscal year 2019. One thing I will draw your attention to here is CapEx. Um, we've seen CapEx as a percent of revenue fluctuate over the last few years a bit during our transition to AWS. And so going forward, we would expect it to be around the 2 to 3% of revenue range. Now, our philosophy and principles on share repurchases um, have not changed, so this slide should look very familiar to you. Um, that said, I just wanted to remind you of how we actually manage that program. We limit repurchases to cash in excess of what we need to run the business and to make prudent investment. Um, prudent acquisitions. And at a minimum, we expect to offset dilution over a three-year period and to be in the market each quarter. Now, taking into consideration the market opportunity and our financial principles, we're pleased to be guiding double-digit revenue growth for both small business and consumer segments at the high end of the range. Now, this is the guidance that we released back in August, so there are no changes here. 
But we're excited that we exited the year with strength across all of our businesses, and we expect this momentum to continue as we make our way through fiscal 2019. Um, this is our guidance for operating income and EPS. No changes here either. But we're excited about the plan we have for this year. Um, you'll also remember at our last earnings call, the move to 606 has had an impact on our margins this year, and you can see that that's reflected here. If you do have any questions about this, you can take a look at the materials that we published back in August, um, or reach out to anyone on our investor relations team, and we'll be more than happy to help you. So in summary, we're confident about the business as we continue to see opportunities to drive durable growth. We're focused on both the short term and the long term, and we're continuing to build and invest to deliver for customers. Our One Intuit ecosystem strategy is positioning us well as we look ahead, and we'll continue to use our financial principles to guide our decisions. We look forward to reviewing our results um, as we move through the year. Thank you.